Yesterday on our show, we also discussed how the Houston Texans have to avoid the rat poison, the rat traps, whatever you want to call it. Praise. You can't get too high off your own supply or off of people praising you. Interestingly, the day after we talk about some praise that C.J. Stroud was getting, comparisons to Tom Brady, Joe Montana, Peyton Manning with Kevin Clark had this to say about regrets that he has about his rookie season, and he brought up C.J. Stroud. You get to relive one rep of your career and get it back. What are we going with? Oh, God, one rep. Uh, I mean, can I have all 28 reps of the 28 interceptions I threw my rookie year? (laughs) I mean, I mean, mean, C.J. Stroud, the way he's played this year, I mean, like, like the respect I have for his season, I can't describe it enough because of what my rookie season was like. I mean, I always say, well – it's tough being a rookie in the NFL. CJ Stroud's like, it doesn't look that tough. It was extremely <laughs> tough for me. It was tough for Peyton Manning, but he still had an awesome rookie year. He just threw a lot of interceptions. He still set uh, passing yards records, passing touchdown records in that season in Indianapolis. And he, and he did change the Colts from uh, a afterthought to a legitimate franchise. Like, they hadn't been that good since the days of Johnny Unitas, Don Shula, before he left for the Miami Dolphins. Pretty interesting to see that. Anyway, um, CJ, don't listen to Peyton. Don't listen to these comparisons. Remember, Stephen A. Smith and others at ESPN, they don't believe you have much of a chance against the Cleveland Browns on Sunday. No chance. Stephen A. Smith, Pat McAfee, the guy with the mullet on the Pat McAfee show. I'm sure A.J. Hawk. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know if he's vocalized anything. but They seem to be doing it in jest with Strout, but it it does feel like there's a lot of buzz in favor of Cleveland winning the game. And I get it. Their defense is good. It's been an interesting season. I really don't know who I'm going to pick on tomorrow's show. I'm, I'm going to save it because I, I still don't really know where to go. I'm not feeling super confident about it. But I also think it's it's weird that this is not just a straight-up pick em game. I, I, I think with C.J. Stroud back aboard, like, to act like the last game has any impact, especially when Will Anderson will be back, and mm-hmm. it seems like there's a chance Jonathan Grenard will be back. It, it's got to level the playing field somewhat. Especially when I heard Five Star uh, on with the the bench this morning as well say like the Browns road defense compared to their home defense yeah. there's a significant discrepancy. There I, I I remember well. looking at that when they played uh, Houston the first time, but yeah, it it, it is going to be interesting. They they do match up well because they the Jim Schwartz, the defensive coordinator for Cleveland, he just kind of trusts his talent. I'll say on defense, and he'll just man up teams. And just say, hey, try to beat us one on one. And CJ Stroud and the Texans offense have struggled against man coverage, mostly because without Tank Dell, it's just like uh, Nico Collins is the only guy that you really trust in a one on one situation matched up with the NFL cornerback. So that that's going to be interesting to watch that matchup. But again, it's CJ Stroud. You feel pretty good. You know, I said it last week going into the indie game, like, CJ Stroud has now graduated into the point where walking into a game with him, you feel pretty good. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's a great place to be. It's a place that I used to be as a Patriots fan with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. Oh, Teddy Bruschi is now talking about the uh, end of an era. I just that's saw what it says on Belichick ESPN. leave the podium from the press conference, and I, I'm not, I'm not kidding. Like there, there is a tear welling up in my right eye. And oh, then I saw Rodney Teddy Harrison. Bruschi coming in. Bruschi is definitely tearing up a little bit. Yeah, this is um, yeah. wow. Stop rubbing it in. Is that Matt Patricia? Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's that's a good way to lighten the mood. I appreciate you on that front. So there are a lot of naysayers about the Houston Texans. Let's focus on one of them who hasn't really been called out for things that he said specifically a year ago. And this is before we even get into his beef with Jason Whitlock, but. Remember what Stephen A. Smith had to say about the Houston Texans organization about a year ago? Here is Stephen A. Smith at the beginning of 
a rant that he had about the Texans right after they had fired Lovey Smith. The Houston Texans organization, I'm going to say something loud and clear over the national airwaves, and I don't give a damn what anybody thinks. African Americans need not apply. This is not an organization that has been fair to African Americans as far as I'm concerned. And I have these two as an example. You can use Romeo Cornell and the kind of situation they put him in in the past. Um, I don't like this organization. I don't like this organization. That is a strong thing to say, especially when you think about a conversation he had with Shannon Sharp on first take right after the national championship game or before the national championship game, talking about the impending Texans-Browns matchup where he said that he would love to see Deshaun Watson win a playoff game with the Browns. Huh. wonder if, if that is something that has perhaps floated into why Stephen A. Smith doesn't like the Texans. This rant was not done. It was very long. And he believes that the Houston Texans are one of place that Black head coaches, even though D'Amico Ryans is a black head coach, should not apply, and that it's, to be frank, racist. You just wanted them to band-aid the issue for the moment to buy you some time before you did what you wanted to do. The Houston, organ Houston Texas organization are an atrocity. They are an embarrassment. And as far as I'm concerned, if you're an African-American and you aspire to be a, a head coach in the National Football League, there's 31 teams you should you should hope for. You should hope beyond God that the Houston Texans never call you. Not as long as that man is in there because it's an embarrassment and something needs to be said about it. Well, wrong. And I wonder if this agenda continues from Stephen A. Smith and if he picks against the Texans partly because of it. Because let's be honest. You know me, I'll admit it. Like I, I have a personal bias specifically against the Tennessee Titans. I, 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 I hate them, and it has not much to do with, honestly, them leaving town. I know for a lot of you, that's the reason you hate them. I, I hate their fans like with a passion. I think they, they, they're unbelievably sensitive little babies about things. And sometimes your personal opinions does find its way, weasels its way into your actual opinions about things. So I wonder about Stephen A's pick this week for that game. Now, clearly, in the public eye, the Texans have done quite the 180, and they are likely to have the head coach of the year. It's a chance. Offensive rookie of the year and defensive rookie of the year. And we're all looking at this like it never happened. But you you look at the Texans organization just historically and, and these accusations that are made. I mean, this is a quarterback that did have Tony Banks under center. It, it also, of course, drafted Deshaun Watson, traded up in the draft to draft Deshaun Watson, had Rick Smith as a general manager for a long period of time, and has had, as a interim head coach, Romeo Cornell, head coach David Culley, head coach Lovey Smith. The funny thing about those last two, it's, is it really racist to move on from those guys after one year when they were good and things really did not seem to be showing much signs of progress. And I suppose you could argue that it was happening at the end of the year for David Culley in the Texans, but at the same time, like it was so bad early on. Some of the things he was saying at the press conference, you have to wonder, wait, why did they hire him? That's more the issue, not moving on from him after a year. And I would say the same thing for the Lovey Smith era. It's like, why did you hire him? Oh, because you were trying to avoid Josh McCown at the last second? Oh, because you'd finally gotten rid of Jack Easterby or something like that? Yeah, I think I think that is a key part, too. Well, A, you just have to, like, you have to remember that last year, or before, I mean, before, like, week eight this year, there's no reason for the national media to, like, talk about him at talk all. Talk about the Texans. So, when you just see, like, wait, they hired a black coach, fired him after one year, hired another black coach, fired him after one year. We know Jack Easterby is a moron. We know, like, we know the Texans are not really a well-run team at that time. They were not a well-run team at that time. No doubt, so no denying it. It's very easy to put the pieces together, and like, I mean, honestly, some of that stuff, like, I would agree with. I would not agree with. Uh, African Americans need not apply. I, I think I think that's that's a, a step farther than I, I am willing to take. But I, I, a lot of that stuff, you're just like nodding along, and I mean, it is really the hiring of D'Amico Ryan's the drafting of CJ Stroud that's just like boom now now they're now they're one of the I mean top half easily uh 
organizations, it feels like. Oh, yeah. And they're one of the most valuable in the NFL. It, yeah. it is crazy how quickly something can change. But since this is an organization, as you said a little bit before, Sean, that is rarely discussed, when these moments do happen, go back to 2017 with the comments from Bob McNair, which were, I thought, insensitive, but I did not think were as bad as they were made out to be, where he said, like, the, the inmates are running the prison. Was, I thought it was inmates running the asylum, so I thought he just butchered the saying. People acting like that was the worst thing that was ever said, I thought was, like, a little bit of a reach. I don't think Bob McNair was saying, like, yeah, all these guys are prisoners or something it, like that. It's also just a time and place situation. Exactly. It was, like, specifically talking about the Colin Kaepernick stuff. Correct. Then Correct. using that metaphor is, like... Not not the time, dude. I remember going on the other night and saying it's racially insensitive, but to paint him as a racist, yes. I, I'm I'm not going that far. I, th I think that's over the top. Uh, like, I think it's just an older guy from a different generation, but not saying like, oh, all these people out here doing this, doing that. Like, he wasn't doing that. He just... That was what came out of his mouth. But it's interesting how perception changes when you win. Like, that's all you have to do. You win and everyone forgets about this stuff. 